Greetings again. This is Brian Fields, Amateur Radio Call Sign, W9CR. And uh, today, doing a little bit of spectrum analysis here. We're going to look at the, uh, just the harmonic levels of uh, a radio I was loaned here by a friend of mine, uh, Lou Romero, W4LT. Um, my voice is a little bit hoarse here because I was out in Denver last week for the uh, SCTE meeting. Um, and uh, unfortunately had to do a little bit of booth duty, so shaking a lot of hands, talking over a lot of din. Uh, I don't know if I've caught something or I have uh, just have a, a worn out voice uh, for talking so much. So what we're testing here today is uh, one of the um, Bridgecom systems, VCH220 handhelds, a little 220 radio that Bridgecom has put out. Let's see if it'll focus in there on it. Focus, there we go. It's a neat little 220 radio. There we go. It's not a whole heck of a lot on 220 around here. My repeater is about 20 miles away right now. And I'm also out in my lab, which is pretty well shielded. So um, I'm going to be using the same test setup that I used before, which was the calibrated um, verified one, which, uh, as you can see here, we got the 30 dB attenuator. We got a power meter. Uh, we also have the spectrum analyzer ready to go. And uh, I did check this this morning, but uh, we are still uh, at 223.5 uh, megahertz, exactly 30.40 uh, dB of loss in this setup right here, which, uh, you know, again, consists of these Sucaflex cables. The only thing I am not measuring is this guy right here, which is a SMA to N adapter, if you can see that. little one I made up out of my adapters. Um, one of the neat things about this radio that I really like is the um, adapter right there. It's a, uh, I don't know if you can see that. It's actually recessed like a lot of the commercial radios. It uses a mail on the radio itself, which is nice. So, um, Typically not the ham radio way to do it, but the nice thing, you can do this with the radio and it's not going to break. Worst thing is the antenna might break or something. And uh, if Lou's watching this, I'm sorry I just did that with your radio, Lou. Um, so let me get into testing this and uh, I'll show you some of the results here. Um, the good thing is since doing this last time, uh, I have my notebook right here. Um, and we're going to be looking at the um, 97.307, um, which is a couple things, 25 watts or less, which this certainly is, um, needs to be at least 40 dB down and greater than negative 16 dBm down, which is uh, <clears throat> 25 uh, micro watts. Uh, so that's going to be the limiting factor here on this one not so much the output, but I'll check the output power here. I got a fully charged battery and uh, we'll go through that. Okay, we're back on the power meter here and I have this hooked up. And you see our cable wraps around this way, comes in this side, goes through this, goes through the power attenuator, comes out the other side. And so uh, we're on 223.5. Uh, I have it configured to transmit, you can see there. and. Uh, this is uh, going to be factor 1 out of 10, so full scale is going to be 10 watts. And uh, let me zoom in here, and we can uh, show you what we have going on. Okay. You can see this guy transmit here and down in the lower left corner. And we are, wow, look at that. And it's 5 watts, almost on a dot. A little bit more than that. But that's pretty cool. Um, and it's holding steady even with the battery. So it's exactly 5 watts out. <coughs> so that's, uh, that's pretty awesome. Um, and uh, again, we're going to be looking at, uh, since we're going through a 30 dB attenuator here, and our entire calibrated setup here is negative 30.406 dB uh, on 223.5 megahertz, which is our test frequency. Uh, when we calibrated this on the VNA, um, 
that means any measurement we view on the spectrum analyzer, we're going to have to subtract that amount from it uh, because this is going to act like a big pad in front of it. Um, again, 30 dB in here, you know, you put 100 watts in on this, you're going to get one watt out. It's not very much power. Um, let's go over to the spectrum analyzer and do some analysis. Okay, uh, we're back again in here. And I have the uh, uh, spectrum analyzer set up. Um, still going through the power attenuator right now. And I have it in single trace mode. So what we're going to do is do a single trace. Um, you'll see I have a line here, which is negative 46.40 dB, which would be negative 16 dB, which is our uh, point, uh, it's, uh, 25 microwatts. Um, that converted to dBm is 16 or negative 16, excuse me. So if I have a 30.04 dB attenuator in there, it's gonna show up as negative 46.4 on my uh, display here. Uh, so, so long as we are under this, we'll be good. I have it set up to single trace mode here as well. So I'm gonna give it a trace. It's on max hold right now. I am transmitting on 223.5, putting out five watts. Okay. There we go. Now that's how that should look. Um, we'll do a couple things on here. I'm going to hit the uh, marker and let's see. Oop, marker. Peak. Okay, so the main peak is 6.43 dBm. That makes sense. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And. Uh, Let's see, let's get the, um, turn the peak table on. This will show us our main peaks. So we, of course, have our second harmonic, which is negative 56.58 dBm, uh, which, again, considering this is um, going to be 30.04 dB down, um, that's excellent attenuation because uh, you're going to add uh, so it's uh, better than 80 db down it's a uh, 86 point uh, 87 db down the uh, same thing here that's that's perfect and you notice how there's no other crap in here it's just nice and clean uh, nowhere near uh, the uh, the bofang that we used so <laughs> that that one was especially bad on 220 but uh, i gotta say um uh, this right here, so if we add 30 to that, we're at 36.48 uh, uh, dBm or so, uh, which is about where we should be um, going into this guy here. Because, uh, again, we have this big attenuator in here. So, yeah, that looks really good. And one of the things I will do is uh, we're going to clear the same thing here. So let me clear this. Um, trace. What do I do? Uh, clear all, okay. Trigger. And what we're going to do this time, I'm going to go on low power. Um, let's see. Function power. Low. Function again. Okay, we are on low power now, which... <coughs> let me see what this should be. Uh, looks like this is about one, just, uh, just under one and a half watts. Uh, 1.3 watts or so. Again, um, we're not looking at attenuation here as we're looking to make certain we're under that. Sometimes when you take a, an amplifier below what it's supposed to run at, it can get more spurious. So it's always good to look at our low power setting as well. So let's do that. I'm going to key up. And now we're going to do a single sweep. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. you got to go in the trigger menu. <laughs> okay. See, single. Single sweep it. We should be sweeping right now. Why are we not sweeping? Trace. Oh, set to blank, that's why. Okay, max hold. Sweep. There we go. Ah, that is... That's perfect. That's just what it should be. So, that's great. And it says we're putting out about... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, 30 point 31 dBm or so of power and you can just 
barely see the second harmonic right there, way below the noise. Um, that's that's ideal. It doesn't even show up on the peak table. I, I could make it show up, but you can see we're, we're way attenuated below what we actually need to be. So this is a, a very clean radio. Uh, I'm very happy uh, with this to see uh, some uh, people making some great stuff for the, uh, the 220 market. Um, <clears throat> I have seen the inside of their repeaters. I can't say I'm uh, wild uh, about their repeater construction, but they are going after the amateur radio market, which uh, uh, I'm, I'm more used to dealing with uh, commercial radios that cost $15,000 for a repeater. Uh, so for the target market, I think it works okay. Um, <clears throat> so great little radio. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy this, this is clean and uh, proving that even if something is made in China, it doesn't necessarily have to be crap. Um, good thing is, this device right here, my Spectrum Analyzer, is made in China, and it's uh, probably one of the best values you can get. Uh, won't do everything, but for the general RF lab that I have set up at home, it's great. Well, I gotta say, um, I'm very happy with this little radio. It is uh, pretty darn cool. A little 220 dual band or uh, mono band radio. I want to say it's, uh, it's certainly not the price of some of the Chinese radios, um, but it seems like it has good performance as well. Um, I didn't do anything other than just check the power out, but it's certainly sensitive enough in my general testing. Um, I haven't done any two-tone um, adjacent channel, but you know, from, from what I've seen, it looks like it should be okay. The one thing I did forget to mention, I did want to show, was the serial number of this device, and it is... Uh, OJW00356. Let's see if I can zoom that in here. There we go. <clears throat> and I apologize for being hoarse and not making videos here, but uh, <clears throat> I, I want to say I think I uh, uh, want to again thank Lou uh, Romero, uh, W4LT, for loaning this to me uh, so I could test it. Uh, I didn't want to. Didn't want to buy one just to see what they were like because I, I certainly have enough 220 radios, um, but they're great. Um, so, anyways, uh, with that, I'll let you be. Uh, this is uh, Brian Fields, Amateur Radio Call Sign, W9CR, 73s.